When we make an electronics project, we usually talk about microcontrollers or sensors. But there is one very important thing that we almost ignore, which is the power supply. Power supply is the most important part of any electronics project, because without a proper power supply your circuit is incomplete. So let's talk in today's video about the power supply and the different types of components involved. So stay tuned. Welcome to SD Robotics. We can power our electronics projects in three main ways. The first type is directly from laptop or PC via the USB port. When we build a project at an early stage, we mainly provide power through a data cable with a laptop or PC USB port. There are different types of USB ports, but all types of USB ports are basically four wire, two of which are used for its data exchange and the other two are used for providing its power. It has two advantages, first we get a stable 5 volt from USB port and through the same connection, we can establish data communication. There are advantages and disadvantages to this power supply. The advantage is that the USB port can provide uninterrupted power to the microcontroller board and several sensors or peripherals. Also it has enough current to handle a small-scale project. But when working in this way we have to keep in mind a lot of risks. We need to keep in mind that if there is a short circuit, then there is a chance of the laptop being damaged. If there is an inductor or capacitor in the circuit, we need to use a discharge resistor to avoid damage to the laptop. If we use an external power supply, for example, I am using a motor that requires an external 12-volt power supply. In this case, if the 12-volt VCC is accidentally connected to any USB pin, then there is a chance that the laptop or PC will be big damaged. For this reason, whenever you add an external high-voltage supply to your project, you must disconnect it from the USB port. The second method is to supply power through SMPS or adapter. In this method, we provide power to our project by converting AC current to DC. Different types of devices are used in this method. The first device is adapters. Adapters are small devices that can provide a particular voltage output. Such devices can be used in low-current intensive projects. The second device is SMPS. In this case, we can use SMPS of a desktop computer with which we can get 12, 5, and 3 volt output, or we can use fixed voltage SMPS. The power output of SMPS is much higher than that of an adapter, which allows you to easily create different types of power-hungry projects. The third device is the bench power supply, such devices can be seen in labs or workshops. With the help of this, we can set the voltage as required. These are mainly used for experimental purposes. The fourth device is the high-link AC to DC converters. This DC converter is mainly used, where we have to design the whole circuit in a compact way in a PCB, and require an AC to DC converter. These devices are capable of providing a particular voltage, and their current output is also quite low. This type of AC to DC converter has no such disadvantages, but since we are working with high voltage AC we need to be very careful. The third method. In this method we can use to power our electronics projects is through batteries. Batteries are mainly used for projects where there is no specific power source or the project is mobile, such as drones or remote control vehicles. But the thing to keep in mind before giving power to any project through this method is the power density of the battery, which is expressed in watt hour per kg. Depending on the type of battery its power density varies, so we can use batteries of different power concentrations as per the project requirement. Here I have tried to compare the power concentration between different types of batteries. Let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of a battery-powered device. Batteries are very convenient source of power for powering mobile devices like drones, remote cars, sensors, etc. Battery-powered projects have no such disadvantages, but the project needs to be optimized in such a way that power loss is minimized and maximum battery life is achieved. So far we are discussing different types of power sources, but we can divide it into two more sections. One is unstable power source such as battery and AC to DC converter etc. On the other hand another type of power source is stable power source like adapter, SMPS etc. In the case of an unstable power source, the voltage is constantly changing. For example, as the battery discharges, its voltage continues to decrease. Suppose again a simple AC to DC converter which basically consists of a transformer and a full bridge rectifier. In this case also the output voltage fluctuation can be observed along with the fluctuation of the source voltage. Suppose we want to provide power to a microcontroller, in this case, we can easily provide power from the stable power source. But we cannot provide power to a microcontroller from an unstable power source. Because of the unstable power supply, the microcontroller may not work properly or at full potential. 
This is why we have to convert unstable power sources to stable power sources, for which we use a DC to DC regulator. DC to DC regulators can be divided into two categories. One is linear regulators and the other is switching regulators. Linear regulator. As its name suggests, a linear regulator is one where a linear component is used to regulate the output. It is also sometimes called a series regulator because the control elements are arranged in series between the input and output. This kind of regulators dissipates any surplus as heat in the voltage conversion process between input and output voltage, it is not nearly as efficient as a switching regulator. Since it consists of linear elements, the current across the circuit is the same. From the graph, we can see that we are providing the input voltage as 10 volts, after it is passed through a 5 volt linear regulator. The output voltage is converted to 5 volts, and the surplus is dissipated as heat. Consider, 1 amp current is flowing across the current circuit, in which case if the input power is 1 watt, then the output power will be reduced to 0.5 watt. So in this case efficiency is reduced by 50%. Let's find out about some popular linear regulators. 7800 series. For many years the 7800 series linear voltage regulator chips were the most popular and were used in many large and small electronic circuits. Although now they are a little dated, they can still be obtained very cheaply and provide excellent performance and ideal choice for many electronic devices and circuits. The 7800 series voltage regulators are very easy to use, it has three terminals, input, ground and output respectively. This is the circuit diagram of this controller. You can see that very few additional electronic components are required. Only two capacitor is used at the input and output end to complete the circuit. There are many variants of the 7800 voltage regulator depending on the output voltage. Let's take a look at some of the features of this controller. It supports a voltage range of 7.5 volts to 30 volts as input, maximum 1.5 amp current, followed by output voltage range of 5 volts to 12 volts, and finally standby current of 5 mA. LM317. The LM317 is an adjustable three-terminal positive voltage regulator, capable of supplying more than 1.5 amp current over an output voltage range of 1.25 volts to 37 volts. It requires only two external resistors to set the output voltage. It has three terminals, adjust, ground and input respectively. This is the circuit diagram of this regulator, you can see that there is a total of four external components, two capacitors, one resistor, and one potentiometer for adjusting the output voltage. Let's take a look at some of the features of this controller. It supports a voltage range of 3 volts to 40 volts as input. Maximum 1.5 amp current followed by output voltage range of 1.5 volts to 37 volts. And finally standby current of 5 mA. AMS 1117 series. The AMS 1117 series of adjustable and fixed voltage regulators are designed to provide up to 1 amp output current and to operate down to 1 volt input to output differential. This voltage regulator IC is a series of fixed voltage versions like 1.2 volts to 5 volts, along with that AMS 1117 has an adjustable version, which can provide an output voltage from 1.25 volts to 12 volts, with the help of only two external resistors. This voltage regulator offers thermal shutdown and current limit functions to assure the stability of chip and power system, and it uses a trimming technique to guarantee output voltage accuracy. It has three terminals, adjust, ground and input respectively. The circuit schematic is the same as the schematic LM317 regulator. It is an SMD-based component, so it is difficult to use through whole PCB or breadboard. Instead, there are various plug-and-play modules available for this IC that we can use in electronics projects. Let's take a look at some of the features of this controller. It supports a voltage of 18 volts as input. Maximum 1 amp current followed by output voltage range of 1.2 volts to 5 volts and finally it is built in thermal shutdown. Now we will discuss about the second type of voltage regulator, which is the switching regulator. A switching regulator is a voltage regulator that uses a switching element to transform the incoming power supply into a pulsed voltage, which is then smoothed using capacitors, inductors, and other elements. Power is supplied from the input to the output by turning on a switch until the desired voltage is reached. Once the output voltage reaches the predetermined value the switch element is turned off and no input power is consumed. Repeating this operation at high speeds makes it possible to supply voltage efficiently and with less heat generation. From the graph, we can see that we are providing input voltage as 10 volts with 50% duty cycle. Then if we filter its noise through inductors and capacitors, then we get stable 5 volts as output. Assuming we are sending 1 amps current to the input. 
Since no power is consumed in off status, the total input power will be 5 watts effectively. Since the output voltage is 5 volts, the total output power will also be 5 watts. So in this case we can achieve 100% effective efficiency. There are three types of switching regulators, buck converter, boost converter, and buck boost converter. Buck converter. Buck converter reduces the input DC voltage to a certain DC output voltage. This type of switching regulator is available in ready-to-use modules on the market, where no external components need to be used. These modules have potentiometers for adjusting voltage and current. These are some of the popular buck converter modules. These type of converters has no current limit, we can generate any amount of current using MOSFET, inductor, and capacitor as required. Boost Converter Boost Converter increases the input DC voltage to a certain DC output voltage. These are some of the popular boost converter modules. Again, these type of converters has no current limit. Buck Boost Converter Buck Boost Converter reduces and increases the input DC voltage to a certain DC output voltage. These are some of the popular boost converter modules. Since we can increase or decrease the voltage with the help of these converters, such converters are very useful for any electronics project. Finally, we highlighted the difference between a linear regulator and a switching regulator. Since the video is getting longer and longer, so I didn't go into details, if you are interested you can pause the video to see the differences. I have highlighted the differences in a very brief way. We have reached the end of this video, it is very important to have a basic knowledge about power supply in order to build an electronics project. Through this video I tried to give an overview about power supply and the components involved in it. In the future, I will try to present a detailed video about each element of the power supply. I hope you liked the video informative. If you like this video please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and share the video with your friends. I will come back to you soon with another informative video like this.